We're on. Oh. Wow. Okay. Hey, folks. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm Abner Genesee. I'm a co-chair of the workshop committee for the Colorado Theater Guild. And we are so pleased to have Amelia Morse here with us today uh, to talk all about callbacks. Uh, so glad all of you are here. Uh, we have uh, someone actually here with us in person and all of you folks online. We're very excited. Don't want to take up too much time. Want to let Amelia do her thing, but happy for you to be here. Okay. Thank you, Abner. Mm -hmm. All right. Hello. Thank you everyone for being here this evening. My name is Amelia Morse. I am an acting coach and tonight we will be part one about callbacks regarding plays. Just so you know, we'll be doing a part two in August and it will focus on musicals. I think we're waiting on the slides. So I'm just gonna give a quick moment for the tech to catch up. While that is happening, um, I wanna take this opportunity to thank Colorado Theater Guild for hosting this and also Bob Blue Theater here in Fort Collins for hosting us in this space tonight so that we could have this workshop. So thank you to both of you. I appreciate it so much. So, um, like I say, my name is Amelia Morse. I have a Master of Arts, Master of Fine Arts in theater with an emphasis in acting. I am the owner and founder of the Morse Actor Studio. And as I said, I'm an acting coach. I'm also an intimacy director and coordinator. So let's hop right into it. Yeah. That's okay. There's my special thanks slide. Moment. No worries. And at the end, there will be a Q&A, just so everybody knows. So if you have questions at any time, have those ready. I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. So tonight, what we will cover is prepping for your callback, what to expect, what you can do at your callback. And the most important thing that I think many actors think about is after the callback, what you can do as well. So let's get into prepping the callback. So you have auditioned. And congratulations, you have been asked to return for a callback. So what next? What do you do? How do you prepare? Um, what do you wear? And what do you actually bring with you to the callback? So um, many times we're gonna talk about two different things. First of all, we're gonna start with um, when you have the script for the callback. I'm waiting for my slide. <laughs> it's okay. So what can you actually do? What's in your power as the actor that you can do in the callback? If you have access to the script ahead of time, you can read it. This may be the script you own. This may be a script through the theater that you can get a copy of. You can check it out, but you can read it. You may not necessarily know what sections of the script they will ask for per se, but it gives you an opportunity to really familiarize yourself with the characters and the script. You can also take this opportunity to work with other actors, maybe actors you know that went to the audition, your friends. If you have an acting coach that you like to work with, you can contact them as well. And so utilize that opportunity. You can even work with non-actors, your partner, your kids if they read, um, Probably a pet wouldn't be a good idea if they can't read back with you, but you can take that opportunity. <laughs> you know, they can't read back with you, but you can take that opportunity to have somebody even just sit down and read with you and kind of give you um, just that opportunity to rehearse. Something I always tell my actors, rehearse out loud. It's okay if you want to, you know, think in your brain and really go through it, but frankly, get the words in your mouth, speak them, but don't get too attached. Um, make some notes with you, you know, and write them down. Some people like old fashioned pen paper, other people you might have notes in your phone or your tablet, but take this opportunity and really give yourself a chance to make those notes that you wanna have with you. Because with like auditions and callbacks, nerves kick in. And I don't know about you, but if I didn't have my notes tonight, I really probably would forget half the things I wanna say. And so that's why I keep checking because I wanna stay on task. But don't be afraid to take notes and bring them with you. You might have these micro times between going in rain for the director where you can check those things. 
or even just bring it with you, even bring a conversation with other actors that you work with. And that might even help them with their callback, not necessarily your competition, but really collaborate and have a stronger callback together. Um, decide what scenes you think the director may use at the callback. Generally, a director might pick scenes that have two to three characters at most, or even those moments that could be of importance to the script. And so it's not a bad idea to use kind of your judgment, especially if it's a play or a musical, but mostly we're talking about plays that you're familiar with and you kind of know this might be the moment. Rule of thumb, I say no more than two to three pages at most. Again, just kind of find a way to break those down. Make choices, but be open. Have choices, have your interpretation. I hear this a lot from actors. What is the right way? I don't like that. What works? I loved Tim Gunn. And that was one of my favorite phrases he always used was make it work people. And so really think about what works for this character. That's why it's so important. If you've got the script, you have all this material you can work with, make it work. Um, also, if needed, bring your own copy. There's nothing wrong with bringing your own copy of the script with you. If you're an actor that works so much better with highlighting your lines or having your notes written down, there's nothing wrong if you feel more comfortable having your own copy of the script. We're actually, yeah, we're not to that slide yet about what to wear. That's okay. We'll give them a second to catch up. We're kind of jumping ahead. To the right. Okay. Now, what about if you don't have access to the script? Sometimes there's newer shows out there that we can't get a hold of copies of them. Maybe they're not on the internet. Maybe it's a newer show that's being developed. And so we don't have access to the script ahead of time. Um, but what do you actually know about the story? Was there any kind of copy given at the audition that gave you like a synopsis about what the story is about? Um, if you're unable to get a preview copy, you can always ask the company or the director for copies of the sites. If you want to give a reason, that's perfectly fine. If you don't want to give a reason, in my opinion, that's okay too. But if you would like to ask for it, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I'd really like a copy of the sites ahead of time just to review. Um, write notes while reviewing the sides. Again, that way you um, have your notes with you. You have notes about the characters. You have notes about your choices. You do not have to be memorized when you go to a callback. If that works for you, wonderful. If that doesn't work for you, that's okay too. A trick I learned when I was in graduate school from a director that I teach everybody is Take your script, hold it at eye's length. That way you can kind of easily go back and forth when reading with a partner. That way it's not, I'm up, I'm up, I'm down, I'm up, I'm down. So don't worry about, oh my gosh, I need to be memorized. I need to impress these people. It's a callback. It's part of the audition process. Unless the director specifically says that's what they need, it's not needed, okay? Now we are to what do you wear to your callback? Um, some ideas are you can wear the same outfit you wore to your audition. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That way they recognize you. I have done that for auditions and I've actually brought a change of clothes when I got there and realized actually this is not necessary. And I changed my outfit in the bathroom. But that is something you can do. You can also wear something comfortable. I don't really recommend athletic or what I call lounge wear unless it's for a dance callback. Again, jumping a little ahead of myself. Um, if it's something similar or modern style to the character. Now, if you're doing something that's more period based, this is a recommendation. This is not a must have. But if it's a period, period piece, you may consider wanting to wear a loose skirt or a dress, maybe a shoe with a heel. That gives the director an opportunity to really see how your body moves in those clothes. And it really gives you an opportunity to really play as well. But a costume is not needed for these kind of things. You need to be able to move, stand, and sit in your callback. So make sure you do that. 
Also, before you go to your callback and even your audition, try your clothes on, walk around in them, walk outside in them, sit in your vehicle. I highly recommend you do that because trust me, it is so different if you're like slapping clothes on and you're out the door and you're like, I can't move. And it can be really uh, difficult. Again, nerves, nerves, nerves. I can't say that enough. Make this easy on you. Do not make this difficult on you for any reason at all. I also um, say try to avoid clothes that are going to expose private parts of your body. So your pelvic area, your, your buttocks, the front of chest, regardless of gender, just be mindful. You really don't know what the stage or where the space you're going to be in um, is going to be like. I have been to auditions and callbacks. I've heard professors and directors that have kindly said to actors like, please don't wear that next time because you're up high, I'm down low, you get the point. And so just be very mindful. If you don't know what the callback space is gonna be, don't do it. Uh, warm me up. I know, I have this cute person that has a barbell. You don't have to be an athlete, but it is important again to warm up. A vocal warm up is not just for singers. It is for actors too. We use our voice. So all those tongue twisters and those things that you learned in your acting classes in college and graduate school days, bring them back because they are helpful. And yes, you can do them in your vehicle as well, or you could do it with your Uber driver or public transportation. It's a great conversation starter, but do your vocal warmups at home, do them on the way there, but do them, do them, do them. Physical warmups, stretch that body. And you're like, I'm just doing a real simple thing. Again, I can't say it enough, nerves kick in. Use your body, warm it up, stretch it out. That way you're not like, mm all clenched up and you're like, I'm so nervous, but I'm so happy to be here. Um, this is a personal thing, snacks or a meal. If you're the kind of person you're like, I don't wanna eat, that's okay. But maybe throw a couple snacks in your bag that aren't going to melt like chocolate um, or get gross or rot, but maybe have a snack, something that even if you don't wanna eat it there, you can eat it afterwards and water especially my people who live here in Colorado, we all know that water is important, but I don't care if you're anywhere else in, in this world and you're watching this tonight, please be hydrated and sip, don't chug. Because you chug it, you're gonna be visiting the restroom a lot. And I don't think you wanna do that in your callback. Sip your water, sip your water. And also a mental warm up, like really kind of help whatever you need to do. Athletes do this all the time get in the game. I feel like I'm neglecting my in-person. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but you know, like do that mental thing that really like helps you hype up. It is so different from everybody. It could be looking in the mirror and be like, you are a badass and you're going to knock it out of the park. And it could be words of affirmation. It could be quotes. It could be if you're a spiritual person reading, you know, scriptures or noses, whatever it may be, get yourself in your head space, get yourself mentally in the game. And also don't be afraid to have boundaries with friends and family and whatever you have to do to say, don't interrupt me because I'm gonna check my phone after this because I want lights buzzed a couple of times. I don't know if it's friends telling me to speak up or what's going on, but I'm like, I can't answer it. Um, but you know, do what you've got to do to focus. And again, it is so different for everybody. A lot of people are like, mm, I'm in the game. Don't talk to me, my bubble, you know, cone of silence. And other people are like, I got to listen to music. I got to have a conversation. I got to call my bestie, whatever it is for you, do it, do it, do it, do it. All right. Now we are at the callback. So what can you do? What should you do? And how can you give your best callback? So meet and greet. You walked into the space, check in with stage management and see what they need from you. Generally, it's just checking in. Hello, my name is great. I got you. And you can use this opportunity to say, hey, is there anything I need to do? Is there any sides available? And it's at their discretion. You all should know this, but I will remind you, be nice to everyone because you don't know who knows who. So be kind, but take an opportunity just to politely, hello, my name is to your fellow actors you do not need to engage in conversation with them. Because again, you're all there for the same reason. But a hello, my name is, 
Amelia and my pronouns are she, hers might be a great way to just really break the ice with an individual and kind of just start that relationship with them. Um, but again, don't take it personal. If someone doesn't really want to talk or engage in conversation, I'm from the Midwest. I want to talk your ear off, but I also know people have boundaries. So don't take it personal if they're like, hey, great to meet you. Bye. <laughs> um, but also, if you have an opportunity, familiarize yourself with the space. I've been to callbacks where they might have you outside in the hallway. I've had callbacks where they have everybody in the space. So whether it's sitting down and using your visual to check things out, do you feel comfortable? Walk around the space, kind of check it out, touch the floor. You don't have to lick it or anything, but it's okay to really just kind of take it in however you choose to without disrupting other people. Warm reads and cold reads really kind of circles back to what I talked about with when you have the script and when you don't have the script. So if you have it, I call it like, if you have the script ahead of time, I refer to those as warm reads because you had an opportunity of time to read the script and check it out at your own discretion. Whereas a cold read is literally, here you go. You may have seen this zero times to very little. And so it's a cold read. So again, just what tools you need in your toolbox to read through it, make notes. That's why I always recommend bring a device or bring old fashioned pen and paper that you don't need Wi-Fi or cell service for or a battery. And that way you can do what you need to do to kind of jot down a few notes because there may not be enough copies of the script to go around to everyone. So you may not know how much time you have with the script. And so that's why I say, bring something to write things down with. If you're like, okay, I'm reading for, so far I know I'm reading for this character and this character, and I wanna just drop a few shorthand notes. However it works for you, what you need to do, do it. But again, I say the notes thing because again, nerves kick in, you can refer back to them. Okay, the intimacy director and coordinator is coming out strong in me tonight about working with a partner. Introduce yourself. Please share your pronouns if you feel comfortable with that. No one's going to fight you, but it's super helpful. It's also helpful to distinguish when you're speaking about your partner and you're speaking about the character in regards to those pronouns as well. Rule of thumb, if you're unsure, you forget, use people's names. Just use their names if you can at all possible, because I know people have good hearts and you all mean well, but just if you want to try to avoid that thing, Try to stick with names as much as possible. No one's going to bite you. No one's going to come at you. But that's just a helpful tool I have found um, for me. While you're doing that, discuss the blocking. Don't be afraid to share if you have any physical boundaries. And you do not need to explain those whatsoever. But it is very helpful to let people know, even if you're not sure, if you don't think it's a thing or it's a possibility, that's not a bad idea because I'm circling back again to my own lived experience of what I have seen. And I have seen people cross boundaries without realizing it. I have seen people react to those. It's okay, we're human, but as much as possible, try to just establish, you know what? I have a boundary. I don't like people touching my hair. Did I explain why? No. Does it matter? No. Um, I don't want to be touched on my back. I don't want you to touch my shoes. I don't want you to touch my face. It doesn't matter what the reason is. Don't touch it. <laughs> don't touch it, as my child would say. Just don't do it. And then say back to them, hi, would you have any that you can think of? And even in the moment, it's okay if you think of them later and you can just tap in and say, oh, by the way, I totally forgot. I got this sunburn. Could you not touch my shoulder? great. Thank you so much because my clothes are covering it and you can't see it right now. And I forgot. And then you touched me and it's not your fault, but oh, that hurt. Um, keep your blocking simple. You need to focus on the acting. You need to focus on the characters. You don't need to worry about, look at all my actions and all the things I can do. That is wonderful and great, but you don't have to go over the top. Most directors, they really want to see kind of that chemistry, as we call it, between the characters and the actors, and really, like, how do you tell the story? 
And so if it's just, you happen to stay on the bench, like I'm sitting on a bench right now, that's okay. If you feel this moment to get up and move, do it, but you don't have to give a full scale performance. Just really focus on, don't, don't make it harder on yourself. Just focus on the action. Just focus on the, on the character. And as I said, focus more on relationship and with your uh, characters and characterization with your characters. All right, next slide, we are to directions and redirections from the director. Another favorite topic of mine. So the director may give you directions. Do not be afraid to ask questions. And why I say that is because we may not always like it does not make you a bad actor and it does not make you a um incompetent actor to ask a question if you don't understand something just say could you clarify that for me or is this what you mean because that might help you in your callback it also can show just you're an actor that you're curious and you're not afraid to speak up and i get we're scared we want to do the right thing we want to get the part i get it i get it i get it I get it, a thousand percent, I get it. But don't be afraid to ask a director for questions because they're not really thinking about their directors. They're just kind of throwing things out there. And sometimes they're just throwing things out there that they're not thinking about. And so you could just be like, I have a, hi, I have a question. Could you clarify what you mean about page two with X, Y, Z? And the other thing is someone else might be like, Phew, thank you. Someone else might have that question. And I know many of you are like, I've heard this in classes and it's true. It's very true. So don't be afraid to ask the questions. No one will bite. Um, as I always tell people, the worst thing anybody can say to you is no. That's it. Um, when a director gives you redirection, it's not going to make sense. It's not going to make any kind of sense. And there could be a multitude of reasons why they do this. It could be they just want to see how well you take direction. It could be they want to see what you do with obscure direction. It could just see they want to see what kind of acting tools you have in your toolbox. It's not personal. It feels personal because we're actors and we're the ones doing it. But it's just a tool in their toolbox of this. They want to see how you interpret things. And so I tell my actors all the time that I coach is, let's say, for example, you're doing a comedic monologue. And all of a sudden they were like, I want you to act like someone very close to you passed away. I'm watching my words um and you're like huh or you lost something something devastating happened let's go with that one something devastating happened to you and you're like but I'm doing a comedic piece don't try to make it funny just say the words and focus on how can I how can I make this devastating how can I make this devastating it's not going to fit it's going to feel weird it's going to feel really weird and it's not going to fit and it's going to be strange but sometimes Weirdly enough, I have found as an actor, as a coach, and as a teacher, you can find little things that actually might work. And you're like, oh, that's that's interesting. I'm going to pull that out. Especially when it comes to monologues, it's not always in the callback when it's scene work. Sometimes it is. But I've seen callbacks where they actually use your audition monologue and they use those tools to do the redirection. And I've seen that happen. And I've seen many actors, including myself, right? Somebody's like, preach. And you're like, ah this is so weird this is so weird this is so weird but have fun and I know that's easy to say but truly have fun play with it try it it's like putting on a pair of shoes that are way too big for your feet and you're just like what in the heck is happening here just give it a shot do your best because that's what this is about doing your best um I had a question that was brought to me by an actor um, that couldn't attend. And I actually love this question. So I added in, is there any kind of etiquette or time to ask a director for feedback about your audition or callback? And the answer is no. Unless they specify as a general or directly to you that they are willing to give feedback, the answer is no. And I know that's hard to hear because in college settings and universities, generally professors will do that. I had my professors do that. And I took full advantage of it and it was good. But um, in the general schemes of things, directors will not give feedback. Um, there's all kinds of reasons why. And sometimes it could be, it's just not part of how their tools and their toolbox work. 
classes and coaching is really the places and the spaces. <clears throat> excuse me, one more time. <clears throat> Got it. Um, to get feedback and get those ideas about our tools and our toolbox and what we can do to be better and how we can audition better, how we can act better and really find ourselves as actors. And I'm not doing this to pitch myself. <clears throat> I am so sorry, everyone. I need a glass of water. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, everyone. I'm all choked up about what I'm saying. Um, so anyways, I'm gonna try to talk as I cough and I apologize while I wait. I know I should probably take my own advice about water, should I not? <laughs> I forgot my water bottle at home and it's okay. See, look what happens when you talk about it and you forget. It's like a doctor that says, take care of your health and then they don't do it, you know? Um, but yeah, like I say, for every director, it's different why they don't, but generally speaking, you know, this is why it doesn't happen. <clears throat> so you went through the callback, everything has happened. You did a great job. Now what? Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome so much. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that helps. So now what? Um, self-care. I know it is a word and a phrase that people use, but find whatever that kind of self-care works for you. It could be you already have something lined up to go do with a friend or a family member. It could be a phone call with anyone. It could be, I'm going to go reward myself with an ice cream cone. I know it's simple little things. I'm going to go to a park and take my shoes off and walk in the grass. I'm going to go for a drive. I personally go buy pizza, <laughs> but that's me. Um, but whatever you need to do just for that little moment of self-care, reward yourself, go and do it. You freaking earned it. Take some notes. I know I've said the notes thing multiple times, but do it right after your callback where they're still kind of fresh in your brain and do it later, but definitely um, write them down. Voice recording apps really good. I have Audrey. I, I really like, I like it because it records my voice, but it also transcribes my words. So whatever note-taking app thing works for you, but jot some notes down, talk about anything, talk about what you did, talk about your choices, talk about the experience. There's no set rule book of what your notes have to be, but take some notes down for yourself that you can go back a week or so later, it, whether you get the role or not, it doesn't matter, but it helps you track yourself and grow. And um, it helps you learn. But most importantly, don't overthink it. I know that's hard not to do. We're human. We want to. We want to analyze everything, you know, and put it in our microscope, but really just don't overthink it. You gave it everything you got, just like you would a performance, you, you know? And again, we want to, we want to overanalyze those, what I could do, what I couldn't do, leave it on the stage with love in my heart, leave it on the stage and have a great time and break a leg. So. <sighs> my, my slides are catching up now. I'm going to take a sip. Well, that is the end. <clears throat> I want to thank you all for coming. And now, and that's my QR code if you want. And the next one will be musicals and it will be happening in August. <laughs> I'm going to get a mint out of my purse real quick. And I'm going to stop showing. So is there any questions for me? I have a question. Yeah. So I feel like I often um, try to like incorporate action into whenever I'm auditioning in the callback. 
And you, you suggested not doing that. So like, how, like if, if it helps me kind of get into a mental space of like being there, like what's the suggestion to overcome that? Okay. So if I don't, if you hadn't heard the question was about some actors really action helps them get in a headspace and work. And I said, not to. I say, don't overthink your blocking. You can still put action in there. You can even use what's in the script that sometimes has told us, but that, and I always go to the dialogue. The dialogue I go to first before I go to the stage blocking that was done in the original performance and work it out with your partner. Think about like, if there's something very specific that you know, like they need to know, like, I just want you to know on this line, I may touch your hand with my hand or on this line, I'm going to get up and walk away from you. You can do those things, but I just don't want people to be so, okay, now we do this and now we do that. And now we do, you know, like overthink it. And then they're like, so worried about what do I do next that they lose focus of the script? Does that make, does that help? Yeah, yeah, I think that. Okay, thank you for the question. You might ask for any online. Yeah, Abner's got a question. So what, what's the, what, do you, what would you think is the number one mistake that people make in a callback situation? Ooh. Um, upstaging each other. Say that again? Upstaging each other. I think the Ooh. number one mistake I see at callbacks is people trying to upstage one another. I understand the competitiveness. I get it. We all want to be there. We all want to be the best. But frankly, I personally have found when I am more in community and ensemble and creative with other creatives, it's going to give me, even if I don't get cast, but it's going to give people wanting to work with me in the future. I have found even for myself, I have found that for other actors. I've heard that in directors. I've, I've worked on both sides of the table. You know, I'm not just, oh, I'm an actor. Like I have worked stage management, direction, intimate direction, backstage, you name it, I've done it. I have a BA in theater and I'm proud of it. Um, right? Preach to the BAs. Um, but yes, what when you get out there and you get very showy offy and everything, it's like some directors don't care and they're fine with that. And that is fine for them. But that is not my personal value system. And frankly, I found over time that people go more this direction of like seeing people really collaborate and ensemble and work together and, and encourage each other. And they think, I want to work with them. Man, I wish I wish I could have gotten them. Or people drop out of the show and you might be their pick because that's how I've even got cast in shows is people have dropped out and I've gotten the phone call and they're like, I know it's short notice, but I'm like, I'm on my way. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions online? You can put them in the chat. Okay. Or just on you. Okay. Will I be able to see them? Amelia, if someone get uh, someone is upstaging with me mm. in the callback, what okay. can I do? Well, um, I would say, what do you want to do? But how? What are you comfortable doing? Because not every like we are not there to please each other. We're not each other's mom and dad. But if it crosses a boundary with you, you can simply speak to the stage manager to kind of let the director know. I don't want to. I would not prefer not to read with this person. There's a very discreet way. And again, you don't have to give a reason. And it doesn't have to be because they're upstaging you. It could be for another reason. But frankly, I find just a simple, again, why well, have notebooks with papers, you can write it down, just slip a note to someone. Um, you can have a discreet way um, just to say, hey, I, I, I really don't want to work. I really don't want to read with them anymore. If that's okay, you know, please prefer not to. I saw a question pop up in the chat, but I didn't get to read it. Is there? I'm going to walk closer to the screen. We don't have any chats. No oh. questions right now. Oh, we don't? No. Okay. I thought something popped up. But I don't need to um, speak to the uh, scene partner as opposed to like with intimacy. I, I could speak to someone else, like the stage manager. I would say speak to stage management um, just because I've personal experience I feel like when you speak to other actors we have emotions and it seems like actors have higher emotions and egos let's just admit we all got egos mm -hmm. um and I don't really want to see an actor be put into the line of fire or have any kind of reper repercussions against them 
That's why I say let stage management, let directors handle it. Let them find a discreet way to move people around without anybody realizing it. Less drama. We got enough on the stage. Let's have less of it. I have another question. So if it's a callback, like a dance slash, um, I know we weren't talking about musical theater, but mm -hmm. um, one time I get called back and it was a dance callback, but then we also read lines and I felt like I was underdressed for the reading lines. Mm -hmm. Would you suggest changing outfits or what if, would you suggest wearing? Frankly, if you want to, and if there's time, if, you know, I know we're skipping ahead, but yeah, if you, you know, want to change especially like just in general like you feel a little you know like bring the products that kind of help you clean up real quick like water wipes yodorant mints you know um but yeah if you want to change change and if you don't want to that's okay too i feel like really the, sh the the feet the shoes make more of a difference in my callback than my clothes unless again i circle back to it's a period piece and i want to be seen and I can throw on a rehearsal skirt, uh, skirt over my leggings, you know, but really like personally as an actor and even as a director, I don't care. You know, um, I, if there's any directors in the space, what I would say to you, if that is something you care about, then please pass it to your actors and let them know. But don't hold it against them, frankly, though, if you don't, if you don't speak up and say, hey, I want X, Y, Z, then we're going to do ABC. And that should be okay. I'm very opinionated. <laughs> I'm very strong, but that's just, those are my opinions. And that's how I feel about it. I just, if you don't state otherwise, then you should be able to do what you want. Any other questions? I see a red mark. Should I check it? I'm sorry? I see it like a red. I'm, I don't know if it's a question. Sorry to get close people. No, no, that's leave. Well, no chat. Oh, okay. No, no, we're good. Okay, cool. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I got real close there for a very hot second. Okay, cool. No other questions? Questions, comments, concerns? I got that from a stage manager one time. Uh, I'd love to uh, reiterate uh, part two of this audition series um, mm -hmm. coming up next next month. Yeah, come down. Oh, okay. oh. oh. Yeah, part two, actually, it'll be in August. So part two will be about musicals, and we will talk more about um, dance callbacks, the musical part, you know, singing, um, rehearsing those ahead of time. But also, again, like the cold reads, it's like cold singing when you get the music. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to try to give away too much, but, you know, working with an accompanist. Um, my mother is a pianist. She's played her entire life. And so I have a lot of, <laughs> I have a lot of skills in that, but like, how do you speak to your accomplice? How do you ask questions? Same thing with the director, same with the choreographer. Um, you know, what if you're not a dancer? You know, what if you're a mover? You know, like, I know we got some movers out there. So it's like, how do we handle these things? You know, and again, same thing, boundaries around ourselves and the roles. And where will that be? That will be at Miner's Alley. Players, playhouse in Golden, Colorado, and online. But I would love to see people in person too. Excellent. And where can we contact you, Amelia? You can contact me on my website, the morseactorstudio.com, Morse as in the code. I live in Loveland and I work digitally online, but I I can work in person if needed as well. Excellent. Thank you again. Thank you. I appreciate this so much. Thank you so much. This was great. And thank you to all of you who, who are able to join us. Oh, let me sit down so you can see me. <laughs> I won't sit on the water. Um, this was great. So thanks for all, you, all of you for coming. We want to thank the Glass Blue Theater and all the folks here, our in, incredible tech team uh, uh, who <laughs> helped me put this together. And we're actually able to make this work. And uh, the folks who are able to be here with us, uh, as well of, as all of you online. Uh, we're really excited to bring, bring you these, uh, these workshops uh, by noted professionals in the community, and it helps to bring us all together. So we hope that we'll see you at the at the next one, uh, which is in August, and also a small plug uh, for the CTG Henry Awards uh, coming up uh, later this year. Uh, you can go to coloradotheaterguild.org for details on that. Monday, July 24th. It's Monday, July 24th, and uh, so save that date. And um, 
And so for Abner Genesee and the rest of us here, we want to thank you and bid you all good night. Thanks. So Thanks. long. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>